in this section we are going to launch our first ever ans task using ansible i'm really excited to show you this demo so let's get started we have two systems the first is my red hat system where ansible installed and the second system is the remote managed system across which i am going to perform the uh, tasks via ansible so let us first check the ansible version uh, we had installed ansible on uh, top of red hat 8 in our previous session so if you look at the configuration file at present it is showing as none so by default the configuration file of ansible is in a file named as ansible.cfg and this file has to be present in a directory called as etc ansible now let us check if we have etc ansible directory present in our red hat if we go to etc let us do a grep for ansible at present i see there is no directory so let's start with creating a directory in here so now we have ansible directory present within which i am going to create my ansible config file so let me go inside this folder and in here i am going to create a file as ansible.conf uh, let us not enter anything at this moment and after creating this let's check the ansible version again now if you see i can see the config file which is this file so now i have defined the configuration file the first step to implementing a code or implementing a task using ansible would be defining an inventory so i have to define the list of remote servers whether it is a web server database server or a router switches firewalls load balancers whatever that you have in your environment that we are going to manage we are going to define in an inventory so i can create my own inventory anywhere any location but th that inventory has to be referred in in the configuration file which is this ansible.cfg so let me go ahead and create a file let's say hosts.txt in the etc directory i am creating an etc directory but you can create anywhere you want so in here i'm going to define the ip address of my remote web server which is let's say if i go to the remote system and if i give if config i can see this is my ip address so let me go back to the red hat system and in here let me put the ip address in my inventory file i'll save this file and exit now i have defined this file as my inventory but this file i have to refer inside my configuration file which is my this file ansible.cfg configuration file so now i will open up the ansible.cfg file and going to mention this inventory file so how do i mention in here i am going to define it as the defaults and then inventory this is the keyword inventory equal to where is my inventory so etc hosts dot txt let me exit now in here this is the file which we created and we referred this file in our ansible configuration file 
After this, let's try to run a specific command and see. So how do we run the command? Ansible, then the module. So how do I call a module? I would call a module using the M parameter minus M and then module. Let's say um, I'm going to do a ping and then I'm going to use which host. So I'm going to use all. So all the hosts in my inventory, all will be a group which will list all the entries which are present inside my inventory file. And this is a module which I'm calling. What this will give is, it is giving me an error saying it is unreachable, permission denied. It is not able to uh, reach this specific remote host server. Now, why is this? Because from my Ansible server, my control node, I'm not able to access to this device via SSH because it basically what we have seen in, in, in the previous session that it tries to send up a module and run that module on, on that local host and then gives you back the result. So in here we can see that it is showing as unreachable. So now let's go ahead and edit our inventory file and this is where I'm going to mention my username and the password. So for defining the username, I'm going to use the keyword, which is Ansible underscore user equal to root. And then I'm going to define the password Ansible underscore SSH underscore pass equal to default. Even though we do not um, directly mention the password here, there are different ways to achieve this. But for a beginning purpose, I'm just trying to show you how we can do this in, in the simplest manner. So let's save this. Now let's try to run our script again and this time you, you see we are getting a different error it is not saying the similar error it is instead saying that in order to pass the passwords you must install ssh pass program so this is a specific program which lets you pa uh, send the password in order to authenticate via ssh so for this, I'm going to install SSH pass. So it is going to check in the uh, repo and then finally download the package and install it. With SSH pass installed, let's try to run our script again. So with this now you can see that the output is showing as success and ping is a module which comes within uh, Ansible and the response that you are uh, you got as pong and it is showing that it is successful which means basically from my Red Hat system which is my control node from here I have a reachability accessibility to my remote and server so likewise I if I have to test a ping across thousands of nodes think of the manual task that you would be doing so using Ansible this has become quite simple for me not only this let's try installing 
specific uh, image or specific package let's say on my remote system do i have httpd let's say okay at present this specific package is not installed on my uh, remote end system and i want to install this package even without uh, manually logging into the system and then installing it i want to do it from ansible from my control node so basically what i am going to tell uh, ansible is i want to install so ansible all all is Uh, will be representing all the hosts in my inventory and then in here i am going to use a package called as package and then i am going to tell let's say install httpd so the way that we are uh, we have to tell this to ansible to install a specific package would be via attributes so even though we are just telling we do not care what is the command it is all ansible's work so that is where, wherein you know dec the declarative kind of language comes into picture wherein you do not care or you do not have to think about uh, what commands need to run on the remote end in order to achieve some state you are just instructing it that i have i want this you no matter how you achieve this you it is your responsibility now you have to achieve it so this way now what i am trying to tell ansible is ansible all le, all the hosts i am going to use a module minus m the package is the module and the way i am going to instruct ansible will be via attributes so for defining the attributes i am going to use a keyword as minus a and then i am going to define the attribute values in inverted comma install so what what is it that i have to install so let's say name name equal to httpd and now we know that ansible checks the state whether um, the current state it is present and the what is the desired state whether it should be present or it should be absent so you have to define or give the command in terms of the current or desired state so i want the state to be present so this is the attribute that i am going to give as an input to my ansible now let's try to run this and see what happens Let's just wait for a while. Should be it has not installed yet. Okay, the installation is done. Now, in here, if you see the output, right, you can see the output has changed. Changed equal to true. And what changes it has done? Installed HTTPD. Now, if I go back to my server and I, I would do a query again. for httpd you can see here you know the httpd um, package is now uh, installed on on my remote server but what if if i run the same command again if i run the same command again in the background it would check the state of uh, the remote server and whether that specific desired state which you have given you have given the desired state to be present is it present on the remote system so at uh, my second when i run the command second time it says 
that it is present so desired state is equivalent to your current state and that's the reason you can see here changed as false it is already present it is already installed how about what if so and this kind of feature is what is referred to as idempotence what we have discussed earlier so no matter once you are giving a input if you run it multiple times it is going to see and check whether your remote end is what you desire currently what is the status of your remote end system now let's try to um, uninstall this i am going to mention the state as absent let's wait for a while and we can see the output now that you no know, change is equal to true and what it has done it has changed changed what it has removed httpd now uh, let's go back to our um, server and in here if i query again it would show as you know the package is not installed and that's the power of ansible if you are trying to implement or um, in, install the same package on you know uh, think of doing this on hundreds of servers manually how much time will it take for you and that is something which we can simplify using ansible i hope you found this informative uh, let's meet up in the next session till then stay tuned thank you for watching